bit of a different video this time around. It's not going to be me making an argument in favor of any specific position, so much as it is going to be me soliciting feedback on an issue that over the last few days I've sort of thought myself into a corner on and I can't crawl out of it, so I want to see if perhaps I'm just not, perhaps I missed some vital aspect of the issue, and that's where the commenters come in. Um, so, last, I think, four consecutive videos, I referenced this distinction between the wrongdoing by omission and the wrongdoing by commission, and I'm saying that there's no neat and tidy distinction, it's really blurred, um, and of course, the language itself is slanted against the non-traditional view that there is a deep blurring effect going on here and it's about the impact itself not whether you directly committed the act or omitted to prevent the act it's about the level of harm itself that dictates the badness or even the wrongness but of course it's called wrongdoing so language is slanted against the position I'm advocating for there's no such thing as wrong permitting there's no such thing as wrong allowing there's only wrong doing which indicates that there is a serious difference between doing and allowing. Um, now, if you've seen those last few videos I made, you sort of get a glimpse of the arguments as to why I think that's not the case. But the whole thing crumbles, or at least features of it crumble, when you get into things like risk exposure. How does risk exposure play into wrongdoing by commission versus wrongdoing by omission? especially the sort of risk exposure that I all but advocated for when I discussed effective altruism and how the most effective, like the, the doubly effective, effective altruist is going to be the sort of EA who doesn't just help right away, who also helps themselves by way of investment and potentially not only benefits themselves through the peace of mind method by investing, but also ends up with a larger wad of cash to donate decades down the road. Maybe not decades in some cases, but certainly not in a couple of weeks' time. Um, that's what the original EA video I did advocated for. It pretty much said procrastination is a good thing when it comes to this subject. Um, but of course, anyone who tends to read what I write or tends to watch my videos knows that there's a common theme throughout everything I do, and that is that risk exposure is, in and of itself, ethically prickly. There's no such thing as risk exposure that is clean. There's always some negative feature of it. Even if you steal someone's money and you win the jackpot with their money, and they're on some level grateful, but they're also perturbed that you stole their money to begin with, that is a form of a wrongdoing. You've still wronged them, even if you've benefited them in some other way. And you can't just whitewash that wrongdoing by pointing to the benefit. Um, it applies to gambling with money, it applies to procreative debates, it applies to a lot of stuff when it comes to directly inflicting harm, directly stealing their money. But of course, you get into the EA movement, the whole money thing becomes blurred, our money is best served not being spent on us, but spent on the least well off, Thus, the fact that it's ours is ethically fluffy. We know that there are verdicts that are made, and those verdicts are that it ought to go, it ought to be spent on individuals, not ourselves. It's, it's, it's an other-regarding system. So, insisting that we can put off these donations, and, and I make sure to cover my bases by saying that, well, we can still donate chump change for now, but the bulk of those savings should be donated down the road. That's just roundabout risk exposure. So if there's no difference between commission and omission, gambling is wrong irrespective of whether you roll snake eyes or a jackpot. It's the fact that you stole someone's money and gambled with it, knowing that there was no guarantee and knowing that you didn't have permission to gamble with it that's the inherent feature of the wrongdoing, then when you export that thought process and apply it to the EA context, there really is no way to redeem oneself, especially in a world where everything is uncertain. If you think you're going to donate decades down the road, the world might not exist decades down the road. 
we might endure nuclear holocaust, we might endure a whole slew of ugly events. More and more talks about World War III. I'm pretty sure no one watching me needs a lecture on the current political climate globally and, and even nationally. Um, everything is just pretty much um, politically uncertain at this time. So it seems that attempts to do far-sighted effective altruism can't be justified because inherently they bring risk. If the individuals you want to help in a far-sighted method, in a far-sighted manner, if you can guarantee that they're going to be around to be helped decades down the road, then you ought to help them right now. Even if it depletes you and you're left with guesswork in terms of how you're going to fare in a cutthroat job market a decade from now or, or, or 15 years from now or 20 years from now, whenever the robotics kick in and we're left with a depleted labor force or a cutthroat labor force. Um, so one of these things has to go. The procrastination advice has to go or I have to say that there might be a non-pragmatic intrinsic difference at least to an extent. Maybe it's not as deep a difference as the average ethicist would have us believe about the doing allowing distinction. Maybe it's not 100% difference. Maybe we can say there is, um, it, it's a fairly shallow distinction, but it's shallow to a point. And I'm just wondering which one of these two the average viewer would take. Is it, does this undermine the ethical stance that gambling with someone else's welfare or money is in and of itself wrong? Or does it undermine the doing allowing distinction? I can't really come up with a direct answer to this. And I'm just wondering if anyone watching me might be able to. So that's the first question. The second question I have is just another thing that's been rumbling around in my mind. Um, I'm not sure if any ethical egoists watch my channel, but in the event that they do, this is something I typically ask ethical egoists in uh, comment threads and, and other message boards, and I never get a coherent answer. But if you are an ethical egoist and you are trying to persuade a non-egoist to come around to your ethical system, your ethical worldview, that the more other regarding a moral system is, the less moral it is, and the more self-regarding it is, the more moral it is, then you know, by definition, if you are successful in dissuading them against their original position, if you succeed at converting them to ethical egoism, and if they live near you, or even now that we get to do the global transfer of money thing, if they don't live near you, but you are not really well off, and they would have helped you had they not been an egoist, but now that you've persuaded them of egoism, it doesn't matter how horribly off you are, they're just going to look at themselves first and foremost, and the individuals they um, are concerned with on an emotional level. They're not going to be tempted to help perfect strangers because they have no emotional boost from it. So, but it doesn't even apply to people who are ethical egoists who aren't well off. It applies to all ethical egoists. It is in the interest of an ethical egoist to pretend that non-egoistic ethical systems are A-OK. -okay. Because if I, as a non-egoist, let's say some sort of a prioritarian view or a utilitarian view, some sort of other regarding ethical system, right? The more firmly I believe in those systems, the more likely you are going to benefit because I'm going to treat you impartially. So it's, in, it's advantageous to you for me not to be an ethical egoist. And yet, when I point these things out to ethical egoists, I so rarely get a coherent response. They'll either respond by talking about how, well, it doesn't matter, the debate is the debate, it's an intellectual exercise, and whatever happens resulting from the debate is irrelevant. But of course it's not. It can be relevant. Debates do not exist in a vacuum. If you are successful in persuading the individual that ethical egoism is correct, the individual will not be nearly as kind to your interests from here on out. It'll be purely tunnel vision. They will be more invested in their own interests, which is you thusly committing an altruistic act. How do you square that?